Hey everyone, welcome to Biostatistics for the rest of us. In this episode, we are going to learn how to calculate and interpret the mid-range or what is commonly referred to as the mid-extreme. The mid-range is one of the measures of central tendency, but is not as common as the mean, median and the mode. As a measure of central tendency, it provides a simple estimate of the center or typical value of a data set. But we need to note that it is not as robust as the other common measures because it is more sensitive to outliers. And just like the range, the mid-range is a simple and easy to calculate measure. The formula for calculating the mid-range is mid-range is equal to maximum value plus minimum value divided by two. This is simply the average of the highest and lowest values in a data set. As the name implies, it is the middle of the range. So, so it's like the mid-range between the highest and the lowest values in a range of values. Hence the name mid-range. Now let's look at a data set of the number of cerebrospinal meningitis cases in the first week of January 2023. What is the mid-range of the cases in this week? Alright, let's find the mid-range. Now we need to first arrange the data in ascending order. Awesome. So the minimum value is 2 and the largest value is 12. Using the formula, midrange is equal to the maximum value plus the minimum value divided by 2. So we say the midrange is equal to 12 plus 2 divided by 2. And that's um, 14 divided by 2 and we have 7. So our midrange is 7 cases. Easy peasy. So what does a midrange of 7 mean? Well, the midrange just provides a quick estimate of the data set center or the typical value and its interpretation is relatively straightforward. This simply means that the mid value of our data that is ranging from 2 to 12 cases is 7. So in the case of our data, we can say the typical number of cases in the first week of January was 7 cases. Now, don't forget, this is just a quick estimate of the center or the typical value of the data that we have for one week. That's the first week, right? But how valid is this as a measure of center or as a measure of central tendency? To know this is worth noting some points about the mid-range. The first is, since it only uses two values in the data set, that's the highest and the lowest values, it may not accurately capture the overall distribution of the data. So it should not be interpreted alone, but with other measures such as the range, the interquartile range, or the standard deviation to gain a more comprehensive understanding of the data. Secondly, since the mid-range is based on the maximum as well as the minimum values only, it can be heavily influenced by outliers or extreme values in the data set. So the mid-range may not be a robust measure of central tendency when dealing with skewed data. But generally, the mid-range in and of itself is not commonly used in statistical analysis compared to other common measures of central tendency like the mean or the median. Awesome. So remember, the mid-range is one of the measures of central tendency. It is calculated by finding the average of the highest and the lowest values in a data set. And since it uses only two values in the data set, it may not accurately capture the overall distribution of the data, so it should be interpreted with caution and it should not be interpreted alone but with other measures. And generally, the mid-range is not commonly used in statistical analysis compared to other measures of central tendency like the mean or median. Awesome. Now, if you have gained value with this video, please give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends and colleagues to help them. And if you'd like to see more videos like this in future, then consider subscribing to this channel and click on the notification bell icon to get notified of my new videos. In my next video, God willing, I will be showing you how to determine the mid-range for group data. And as always, thanks for watching.